Whether you're a buyer, seller, real estate agent, this is some really big real estate news. The National Association of Realtors, or NAR, just settled in a lawsuit for $418 million saying that real estate agents were conspiring by inflating home prices for higher commissions. Along with the settlement of $418 million, there are two major points that I'll be going over in detail on this YouTube video that directly affect real estate transactions. Number one, the MLS will not have the buyer broker compensation listed on there. And number two, MLS participants like real estate agents need to have a written contract and signed contract with buyers. At surface value, it doesn't seem that bad, right? But I'm here to dig a little bit deeper and show you why this could be a slippery slope for the future of real estate transactions and it could affect you. In fact, I'm actually seeing a lot of these changes happening on the MLS right now, even if it's supposed to be implemented in July of 2024. So sit back, hold on, there's a lot of information here and I'll be going into my opinions on it as well. Let's dive right in. zoom out a little bit more and talk about why this lawsuit even happened. So home sellers accused real estate agents, more specifically realtors within NAR, to conspire to inflate their commissions per transaction. Sellers not only had to pay for their agent, but also the buyer agent, which, you know, has been going on for decades now. And I'm not going to be going into the specific details or the whole story behind how that even happened, but it's an interesting story and it's just outside of the scope of this video. The conspiracy to inflate commissions all started with the buyer commissions being listed on the MLS. So the buyer agents would encourage their buyers to look at certain homes that fit their criteria that might have a higher compensation for the buyer agent. Here's the thing, the issue was not with the buyers, but with the sellers. I mean, with the sellers, they had to pay out 5% or even 6% of the total home price just for the seller agency, and half of that would go to the buyer agent. Is it unfair? Maybe, perhaps, but if you haven't gone through the sale of a home, what actually happens is the listing agent or the potential listing agent would come over with a contract saying, hey, this is how much the commission will be for both my side and the buyer's side. So I don't think there's any sort of, you know, confusion or anything like that because they signed it on the contract. And I guess the main problem here is that sellers did not know these numbers were negotiable. So nonetheless, here we are with sellers choosing not having to pay for the buyer's representation and with the bro broker compensation not being listed on the MLS, you know, there's just a lot of unknowns here. So what happens? So now broker compensation has to happen outside of the MLS. That could go with a phone call or maybe while they're under contract, but a lot of this must happen because the buyer agency needs to get paid. Whether the seller pays for it, the buyer pays for it, or they find some sort of way to come meet in the middle where the seller credits might come into effect and pay for the buyer's representation. And this can be troublesome for first time home buyers. I mean, you're looking at a $500,000 property. Let's say you're putting down 5% on that property. That's 25 grand already, plus closing costs, you're looking at $35,000. Now, in order for the buyer to get proper representation and have a professional in their corner supporting them with negotiations, writing the contract, inspections, and all that good stuff, they need to pay like 2.5% of the total purchase price out of their own pocket. So with that being said, 2.5% along with the 35 grand, which is the down payment and closing costs, you're looking at $47,000 just for a $500,000 home and 5% down. But on a better level for buyers out there, what could happen is that the sellers could pay for the buyer's representation through just maybe increasing the purchase price and having that difference between, let's say, a $500,000 home, increase it to, let's say, $510,000, that $10,000 could be used as a seller credit for the buyer's representation to be paid for. Of course, that just might not happen. Let's say if you are searching for homes that buyers are pretty much at their max budget, you can't go higher on the purchase price because there's just no way for that to happen with the loan amount or the lender approving it, or let's say you're asking for a lot of seller credits you can only ask for 3% of the total purchase price in seller concessions. And let's say, what if you max that out too? 
And so all of that could be negotiated before and after going under contract. But the thing is, is that this hard conversation needs to happen with the buyer and the buyer agents. I mean, this is, this is gonna need to happen because if no one's gonna be paying for the buyer agency, then the buyer needs to come out of pocket for it. And this is where the slippery slope begins because let's say they can't find a way to get paid. Maybe buyer agents slowly become more like a lawyer where they charge based on consultation fees, based on negotiation fees, basically more on a per hour basis rather than, hey, I get paid at closing. Which I know for me, I do a lot of consultation for my clients and potential clients, but there's a lot of people that don't show up or use my information but don't decide to work with me for some reason or do something else where they waste my time and I provided a lot of good resources for them and just decided to work with someone else. And there's a lot to it. I mean, let's be honest, this is a big chunk of change for buyers out there, right? So, I mean, there are other questions come up like, uh, do you need a buyer agent? Can the seller partially fund the buyer agent? Or what if you can get approved for a down payment assistance program? That's another option as well. And all of those are very viable questions, but the thing is, is it's very personalized where your specific situation, your income, your credit score, all that good stuff comes into effect here and your questions might have different answers based on your personal lifestyle or what your goals are in the future. And all of those are very viable questions. The thing is, is that it's outside of the scope of this video. If you want a more customized approach, feel free to hit me up, send me a text, give me a call. All my contact information is down below in the description. I mean, I'm here to help you out. Did you know you can also book a Zoom call with me and it's completely free. I wanna make sure that you're making the right decision, whether you're working with me or not, buying or selling, looking for a proper investment property, whatever it is. Uh, just make sure you contact me, I'm willing to help you out. And on to the second point of the whole NAR lawsuits where buyers need to have a signed contract with their buyer agent. That's of course assuming you want to work with a real estate agent and I highly recommend you do, especially knowing what the seller agent has gone through or their experience with all these transactions. Knowing that you have a professional in your corner that can work with you and negotiate for you, it is to your best interest. And let's say you don't want to work with an agent. I'm going to give you a scenario here where you put, write an offer, you submit it, it gets accepted, and by the time negotiations and inspections rolls around, you're in for some trouble. I'm not gonna go into detail on exactly what we do as real estate agents, but I will say that the seller agent has a lot more experience than you as a buyer without an agent representing you. For example, the seller agent has probably closed a lot more homes than you. They know the transaction and they know what it's like to go under contract. They know how to navigate an inspection and then at the end of it, let's say if you just get nickel and dimed everywhere with a certain home and just get out negotiated, by the time you close on your perfect property, it's just not gonna taste as sweet. Now let's say you want to use a real estate agent for your transaction and your search for a home. And I don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, having a signed contract means you get the agent's undivided attention going forward for the length of the contract. Now what I'm worried about is the slippery slope afterwards. For example, let's say you have that signed contract and you work with a seller in order for you to get an open house or get a showing done on a home, the seller might want to see that agreement between you and the buyer or you and the buyer agents in order for you to show the home just to show the seller that you're a serious buyer. And I'm not sure if it's gonna to get to that point, but there's a lot of other slippery slope instances that I can think of with all of this going into effect. Of course, there might be some extra negotiations from the NAR lawsuit. Um, I mean, we'll see what it's like as it's being finalized, but I wanna make sure that you guys are up to speed and all this good stuff, especially as investors and as buyers. You need to make sure that you're properly funded going forward. I think in the near future, these home buyers and these first time home buyers are gonna have the hardest problem getting through and busting into the real estate market scene. There's a little bit more pressure for them to find the perfect home and not only that, let's say you're a house hacker, make sure that it makes money, but then you're also trying to find the right agent for you. And personally, I think me and my team could provide that value for you. I mean, if you're watching this video and you are a follower of the content that I'm producing, 
This is the kind of stuff that I am making for the general public. Imagine what I could do for you in person. So with that being said, I mean, set up a call. All my information is down below in the description. Make sure you like and subscribe because I don't want you to miss any of this stuff and all of this information is for free via YouTube. That being said, thanks so much for watching. I will let you know if there's anything else that pops up with this NAR lawsuit and a lot of people are talking about it, but I want to give you my two cents on it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.